Okay, problem number four is like problem number three, three limits, but these are limits at infinity. So these strategies that we employ for uh, limits that aren't at infinity are not going to work here. Uh, you can use L'Hopital's rule here, but it's really a lot faster to do the uh, typical strategy that, I, uh, that we did at the beginning of class. So uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x squared plus uh, 2 over x squared minus x. The deal is here, if you uh, let x go to infinity, the leading uh, terms here dominate. 3x squared goes to infinity. Adding 2 to it doesn't change anything. x squared gets to infinity faster than x does. So x squared minus x itself goes to infinity, even though it looks like infinity minus infinity, it really is just infinity because this is a smaller infinity in a sense than this one. It gets there slower rather. Okay, so you could do L'Hopital's rule. Uh, it turns out you would need to do L'Hopital's rule twice to get this uh, to a place where you can just evaluate the limit. Um, but instead we're gonna multiply, uh, we're gonna divide the top and bottom each by one over x squared, which is really the same as multiply, or we're gonna divide the top and bottom by x squared, which is the same as multiplying top and bottom by one over x squared. And this gives us the limit as x goes to infinity of, why x squared? Because that's the biggest power I see floating around, period. So that leaves me with three plus two over x squared, all over one minus one over x. And as x goes to infinity, a reciprocal of a positive power of x always goes to zero. So this goes to three plus zero over one minus zero, which is just equal to three. That's our limit. B, we have a similar strategy. This is the limit as x goes to minus infinity of x cubed, what is that, plus four x squared, divided by uh, two times x to the fourth minus two x, And again, the problem here is it's infinity over infinity. L'Hopital's rule you could use. Um, you would have to use it, I guess, three times at least, or if you've divided top and bottom by x first because there's a common factor of x, you'd have to use L'Hopital's rule twice, but still it's faster in my mind to just multiply by the biggest power floating around. Although I've really been suggesting to multiply or divide by the biggest power uh, in the denominator, usually, and here it's x to the four. Great, we'll do that. Uh, this gives us up top one over x plus four over uh, x squared. And on the bottom, it leaves us with two minus two over x cubed. Again, the reciprocal of any positive power of x, including x to the first, goes to zero as x goes to plus or minus infinity. So we're left with zero plus zero over two minus zero, um, because by dividing everybody by x to the four, then knocks down all of the powers to reciprocal powers, except for this one guy over here, which just becomes a constant. So zero divided by two is just zero. Finally, C, this one is a little bit different. You cannot use L'Hopital to attack this guy because, well, it's not that sort of problem. Instead, we have to use two properties here. First of all, the question is, um, taking the limit as x goes to minus infinity of cosine e to the x. What do I do here? Well, first, cosine is a continuous function. So that means that if I can evaluate what the limit of e to the x is as x goes to minus infinity, then I can just plug that result into cosine because cosine is continuous. Um, and so then I ask the question, what is the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x? Well, we know that the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x is equal to zero because of, say, what the graph of e to the x looks like. It has a, uh, a horizontal asymptote at y equal to zero that it gets closer to as x goes to negative infinity. So this goes to cosine of zero and cosine of zero is equal to one. Fantastic.